All right, and welcome. We got another example of an overview of kind of what's going on in some of the programs. So this is going to look into the uh, virtual machine implementation, kind of what's going on with uh, what we call it. another view. Same thing that we did, but just more. I think this is really helpful to kind of see what's happening. All right, what you are responsible for in things like uh, when we call functions. So let's say we have this this function foo.domain. It's going to compute uh, negative uh, or, or 19 times local 3 and then negate that, take the negative version, etc. All right, so when we compile this into, that's the wrong button. We compile this from the uh, uh, VM code into assembly, what we want, kind of the overview. We're going to create a foo.main. This is the, the file. This, is, this will be coming straight from the VM. We can just take that and just put uh, our label commands around it. We're going to handle the code that uh, does the initialization of the uh, function execution. So in this case, we would need to allocate to memory for four of our local variables, since we said foo main has four local variables. That's just zeroing out the stack four times. All right, next, uh, we need to handle the VM commands push constant 19 push local three. You already have that done for project seven, nothing new to do there. Now we are going to call our function named bar.mult. So, we need to handle that. So to do that, we need to save the uh, caller's state on the stack. This is saving, saving the stack frame, saving the uh, um, return address um, that we want to go to, saving all the segment pointers that we have, local argument, this, that, etc. cetera. Want to do all that and then jump to uh, the bar.mult. And we're going to do that by saying go to the new assembly command we have, which is just going to be a jump command essentially, bar.mult, that's the function name that came from this file, and then the next thing we need to do is generate a return address. And so the way I'm doing that is I'm saying foo, the name of our file, dollar sign, return dot, and then a number. You can just keep incrementing the number as much as you want when you're in a file. What that will do is that when we can call uh, this, this program, uh, the function, sorry, bar.molt, it'll do its thing. When it's ready to return, it will then jump to this foo.return label that we have created. Because of this, we can also save this onto the stack as well. All right, but then uh, in, in the, the view of this foo.main, it, it does all this is the assembly code would generate and then it's going to assemble the, or, or generate the code that handles the uh, negating. Again, you've had that. So it goes through the line by line of the file, uh, assembling it, uh, tra or rather translating from VM code into assembly. We get here, now it's time to assemble the bar.molt. Okay, we have an error function, bar.molt, wrap that in parentheses, done, we, we can do that. So we just simply generate this, um, the label for it, then we need to generate the code that can initialize two local variables. So we just simply initialize or place two zeros on the stack and then move some pointers around. Not a big deal. We do that. Initialize the local variables. Now we're going to handle the code that pushes local one, or after it does whatever it has to do, multiply, and then we get to the uh, function return. All right. It's a little bit difficult, but if you go through the book, uh, it, it's not it's not that bad, just go with very, uh, it's, it's tedious, I guess is the right word. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get the return address uh, from the stack. So we already know what address that is, but because multiple functions we call this, we can't just say foo.return every time because it could be in different spots. So that foo.return that we put on the stack and we called our the current function we're in, we need to just simply pull that off the stack. I stored it in a temporary register, I think register 14, do whatever you want, just store that, for, it's somewhere relative to the stack, store that. Um, copy the return value that we want to return. So what's currently on the top of the stack in our function, move that back up to the uh, stack at the, at the beginning of our stack frame. And then we're going to then just start taking all the items in the stack we have and putting those in the appropriate segment pointer so we can restore where we were. When we finally get to the end, we're going to get that return address we saved. It was in the stack, we stored it somewhere. Get that back and just say, go to this address. So I, again, I put mine in register 14. I could then just load that into the A register and say, go to that address. And that that's pretty much it. So this is some of the pseudocode. Um, then we can look at a little more detail. Okay. So call. This is what it's responsible for. Let's jump into call. So Caller is doing something, whatever, doing work, processing, chunking through data, doesn't really matter. At some point, it's going to call some uh, a function. So you can see what our stack corner kind of looks like. We have all the values in the function. Stack corner is currently pointing here to empty space. Again, it moves down. 
So call uh, the name of the function and then the number of arguments we have. And that's going to be the number of arguments that are just on the stack. The assembly code is going to be push the return label that we're going to generate a unique label. And we're going to push that onto the stack. Excuse me. We're then going to then push local. This is not local zero. This is just like at one and then put that onto D, put D on the stack. Just save the value of the current local pointer. So we push local, we push arg, we're going to push this, we're going to push that, and then that's our stack frame so far. Now uh, we're going to set our argument pointer, and this is going to be the current value of the stack pointer, minus five, so that's going to be minus one, two, three, four, five, minus the number of arguments we had, so in this case I forget, say whatever, so one, two, whatever, and then that gets us then to argument zero. So stack corner, minus five, minus the number of args, that's gonna be our, the new value for our argument pointer. So set that up. Then we're gonna say uh, that the current local pointer is equal to the stack pointer. So that sets the local address and local subject to the top of the stack at empty space. And then uh, after that, we're simply just going to run a go to uh, function where you just jump to that function. And that function, it'll be set up ready for the function. All right. Call. Good. Oh, good say. That return address that we generate, we, we can put that here. That's when we say uh, we put it on the stack. We, can, we, can, we know that at the top of this uh, the code, and we can just simply put the label at the bottom, and we are done. Call. Check. Done. Let's look at writing the command for function. That's going to be the format is going to be function, function name, number of local var variables, and that just means we initialize the stack. So we're jumping into the, some function, and this is where stack looks like. This has been set up for us. All right. So the assembly code that we need to generate. We have our function name. Just put that as a label command. Easy peasy. And then we need to uh, zero out and initialize our local variable. So we call this. We say function bar dot mult five, four, eight, whatever it is. That just means we need to essentially loop the generate code several times. So for the number of variables, we're gonna generate a, a loop that just simply pushes zero to the stack. And that's gonna be, if you have five local variables, your loop would be in Python just to say push zero five different times in the assembly code. So don't get too hung up on that. So you emit assembly code that will push the number of variables uh, in times. So at that point, our stack looks like this. Local segment is still set up so that local zero points to that first zero. Our stack pointer points to the empty space. Um, and that's it. That, that is how we call a uh, function. You simply label, push the local variables, push a zero for those variables, done. OK, return. So we're in a function doing its thing. We finally hit the return. And this is really just kind of tedious. The idea is that the function can do whatever it wants with the stack. It can manipulate the stack. It doesn't matter to us. All we care about is when we hit that return, the top value of the stack has the return value, and we need to return that to the function that called it. So here's what we do. We have our return. That return value is just one below the stack pointer, so we know where that is. We're going to get that return value, and we're going to want to copy it. So the way we achieve this is we're going to essentially, in our assembly, going to use a local variable. We just call that end frame. And we're going to reference everything to the local pointer. I saved my the value of LCL into register 13 just so I could easily access that. So the end frame is equal to, to lo local. Then, once I have this local variable I'm saving, it's, I just did this all in assembly. It's saved in, uh, in register 13. I said, the spot where I want to restore the return address is I take end frame, subtract 5. So in this case, local, subtract 5, put the return value on a store, just put it up there. I'm sorry I said that wrong. That's how you get the return address. <laughs> local minus 5 is the return address. I should have read that close. Local, I'll do it over here. Uh, let's see, local minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So scratch the last 5 seconds, and what I meant to say is we will get... Uh, local minus five, that's the return address. We want to see that. I think I put that right. All right. Now what we can do is we want to say uh, argument is equal to pop. Yeah, this is a lot easier when I did. Sorry. We uh, take the current stack pointer, pop the value off. So that means return value gets stored in this, in, into wherever we have a D, whatever. We're going to put that into argument zero. 
that will restore the the uh, return value. Return value, return address. Okay, so we've taken the return value, put that where it needs to go, and we have the return address we want to jump to stored in a register. And now we're going to just start repositioning things. So we know the stack pointer when we return it needs to be at argument plus one. So essentially load argument, add one, set that to be the stack pointer. That moves our stack pointer up there. So at that point the stack pointer is sitting right where it needs to be, right at empty memory, one above the return value. So in that in effect will recycle all this memory. All the memory this this function is using on the stack is now just be reused. We don't change the values, it's just there and we say this is free memory, free for you to use. We are, we are a kind of benevolent computer. So at this point now, uh, local is still up here pointing uh, kind of up there one above uh, the stack frame we want to save. So what we need to do is just use that end frame variable we had, then subtract one, and that would mean that we're, our, this, this variable we have is now pointing to that. So if you save that, when you take that value memory and put that back onto that. What we want to do, the idea is that we're storing all these segment pointers back to their original value for the caller. So we take that, put that in, into the local variable called that. Wow, that's awful. Put this into the local variable. Take arg off the, the saved stack, put that back into uh, the arg pointer. Same thing for local is the last one. And then finally, we have that return address that we had saved. We now simply just load that onto uh, the A register and do a, a jump we have returned. So that's it. Take this, this is what you want to imp implement. I stored return uh, address in one of the registers, I register 13 or 14, and I research, uh, stored end frame in the, in the other register. So two registers I have just to work with for the compiler, and uh, that was good from there. The net result is that there's no impact on the actual stack. Uh, and when we return to that function, the stack looks exactly how it was for that function, except now we have a return value and it can just kind of keep going. So that is the general idea of what we want to do. Uh, we generate assembly code that does all this. That's how we do call and return. We want to do some of this in the actual assembly we generate so it is independent. No matter where we call a function from, it can return from that. Um, and this is kind of our, our stack frame. So any language that would want to call a function, if you're assembling some other program, as long as you, you adhere to this set of uh, uh, stack usage, you, you are fine. All right, cool. That's that. You can keep going. <laughs>